Hi guys, welcome to the lab 3 on computerized control. Today's session is about the third approach to the adaptive cruise control system, specification and design using state space methods. The main objective is to get into state space design through a practical control problem in the context of the discrete time systems. Regarding recommendations, again you should prepare a report using the provided template and do not forget to improving the KPI value to everybody loves chocolate, right? So don't forget to have fun. Let's just take a quick look on the plant and the consideration. I remind you the goal of keeping the distance between the two vehicles despite the disturbances on wind speed, road slope and foregoing vehicle speed. In the technological scheme of the problem with the control action on the vehicle throttle and brake to keep the reference distance to the foregoing vehicle. If we go back to the original modeling process, and we have a specific video for that, we reach the linear model as a set of two first order equations. This is what a state space model is, but this one is on the continuous time domain. So we have the general structure of the continuous linear state space model defined by the state X and matrices A, B, C and D. For this particular case, the state is defined by Y, the distance to the foregoing vehicle, and V, the vehicle velocity. Taking the model from the previous slide and taking this disturbance aside, we have this for the dynamic equation, defining matrices A and B. And the output equation, in this case quite simple, just identifies one of the state variables as the measured output. Summing up, we define the plant state space model by the set of matrices A, B, C and D. That together with the provided set of parameters are the baseline for the control design. So defining the parameters on the script file, we get a numerical version of the state space in the continuous time domain. This point on, we will focus on the state space representation, always with the objective in mind of modifying the dynamics of the closed loop system. This is the control system. The first step on this analysis is to identify the eigenvalues location. As we know that the eigenvalues coincide with the poles of the system, we get the same values we have been seeing for the poles in the previous labs. And again, the same question, what can we conclude about plant stability? The same way as before, we can now use the state space model to test the open loop step response. Ok, so the next step is obtaining the discrete time state space model of the plant. Sampling period is kept on the same value, 0 0.1 seconds. And from the initial condition continuous state space model with matrices A, B, C and D, we now want to find the corresponding A, B, C and D matrices for the discrete model. We start by defining TS and the same command as before, C to D continues to discrete to get the resulting matrices. Notice that as A and B are quite different, Matrices C and D are the same. Why is that? Please say something about that on your report. As in the continuous case, we start by checking the location of the eigenvalues that, without surprise, give us the same result we have registered for the pole locations on lab 1. And here again question the stability on the discrete equivalent. Again the step response using the same command and the expected response. So in conclusion, it's not because we are using a different representation that we would get different responses both on continuous and discrete time. Somehow the novelty starts from this point on, as we are going to use the state space methods for modifying the dynamics of the closed loop system in a systematic way. The novelty of the control design using the state space representation is that assumes that we have access to the state variables. In this case, the distance to the foregoing vehicle y and the vehicle's velocity v. 
We then use this state for computing the control action. At this point, we should remember that we have a limitation. We need to have an one sample delay between the sensing and the actuation. So as before, we have to find a way to deal with this delay and frame the problem in a way that can be dealt by the state space methods. Following the same approach, we lend the delay to the plant and define an augmented plant. So notice that these two block diagrams are exactly the same. And the definition of the plant contour now includes the delay. The first thing to understand is that we now have an augmented state where the output of the delay, the actual control action, is the additional state variable. So we define an augmented state, xA, and these two equations is what we know from the augmented plant, the original state space and the delay equation. By putting them together in an augmented state space, we get the augmented state space model. Finally, we have the controller by state feedback, keeping in mind that we are feedbacking three state variables, the original two, y and v, plus the additional one, u. I leave to you the verification of these matrices for the augmented model. So let's build the augmented plant in our script file first extracting the matrices, and second, building the augmented state space, which is now a third order system. So step by step, we need to specify the control system, design the controller, interpret and break down the result for implementation, and finally, test the controller already on its final format. Before starting any type of development, we need to specify the dynamics in an appropriate format. In state space methods, we are going to follow an approach very similar to what we did in Lab 1, defining the location of the agent values from the desired dynamic behavior. We use a general second order model defining the parameters, damping D and natural frequency omega n. We have a formula relating the overshoot and the damping factor D, and we know that for an overshoot of 5%, we have the reference value of 0.7. The rise time relates with both these parameters in an approximate formula, but as D is already established by the overshoot objective, we use the natural frequency to set the response time. Back to our script file, we ask for a rise time of 1 second, and we get the same pole location as before. Later on, you are supposed to change the specification values to optimize your controller. From continuous to discrete, we obtain the discrete equivalent location for the dominant poles, this is the eigenvalues. As this process is very similar with what we did in Lab 1 using root locus methods, there is a main difference. Instead of going for by trial and error of trying to find a way to pass through the specification, we are going directly to the solution using a design formula. At this point we recall the supporting theory and Ackermann's formula, where MCA is the controllability matrix that should be non-singular so we can invert it, and the specification polynomial alpha, with an extra eigenvalue as we have augmented the plan for a third order system. We use the command poly to develop the polynomial from the specified roots after extending them with an extra eigenvalue. I've put it to zero but you can use this extra knob to optimize your controller. To develop the controller we first compute the controllability matrix for the augmented plant then we compute the matrix alpha A using the specified characteristic of polynomial. And with Ackermann's formula, we compute the state feedback gain. This is our controller gains. Finally, we should do the verification checking if the closed loop eigenvalues are on the specified location. They are. 
Here we can see the closed loop step response. We have a control system response in 15% slower than specified, but with a 5% overshoot. And notice how the final value is not going towards 1. And this is because we are actuating on UC, not on the actual reference signal. Please comment this aspect on your report. After getting the feedback control gain vector Ka, we can break it down to get an implementable controller. As in reality, the delay do not belong to the real plant. So we break Ka in K and Ku, then break K in Ky and Kv, and replace U0K by UK plus 1. Finally, we shift all terms one sample to get the control action UK, dependent of all term in time k minus 1, as needed. Next step, we have the controller, so we take it to the simulator. And define the controller by inputting the parameters. So the parameter associated with the error goes here, the one associated with the velocity goes there, and finally the control action in the previous sampling period. We run the simulation and voila, KPI of approximately 150, not the best so far. But as we have seen, there is room for improvement, and I know you can do better than this. Refine your controller and win the bar. This is all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Send me your feedback or press like. Thank you. Bye-bye.